Next, we'll talk about systematically testing your plan. So for those that are familiar with a, a lean startup, you've probably seen this image before. This is the build, measure, learn loop that Eric Reese um, created and, and, and talks a lot about. This is kind of what summarizes the, the validation, the, the, the validated learning loop in a lean startup. And so I use the word experiment because that's a very common term that we also use in lean startups. And so for those that aren't familiar with it, you've heard me use things like experiments, and it's going to get even more scientific as we go down. And that's because a lot of the, the roots of lean startup do come from lean thinking, which was also very scientific, and kind of believe in the scientific method, the search for facts, the search for truth, and not you know, fiction or, or, um, or faith, right? So it's very easy. So as entrepreneurs, we always hear uh, the myth of the, 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 um, the determined and passionate and, and perseverant entrepreneur. And while those are all um, necessary skills, because startups are not easy, the going is going to get rough before it gets better. Um, but at the same time, there's, there's also a lot of survivor bias that's going on. Like we always hear stories of people who are very passionate and very determined till the, till the very last moment when their startup was failing, and then they turn it around and had this huge success. And we look at them and say, that's why you have to be perseverant. But we fail to hear the stories of all of those who, who, were, who were perseverant and actually drove their startups to the ground because they were so stubborn and rigid in what they believed to be true. So there's kind of that balance, and we don't hear about those stories. So it's important to kind of highlight both. Um, because it's, while those are very necessary skills, what we are trying to do here is really couple some of that strong belief in yourself and your vision, but couple it with facts so that you can, you can tweak that vision and, and realize it at the right time. So I also would like to go back to even the Steve Jobs example. So that's a case of, even though a lot of people look at that as the anti-lean startup example, I actually do see that a lot of Steve Jobs' career has kind of followed a similar path. He had a very big vision very early on. Um, was more interested in solutions. So he was trying to build this complicated tablet device 20 years before its time, um, build a lot of very advanced technology, at artificial intelligence, handwriting recognition, which people weren't ready for, which the technology wasn't even ready for. And actually, in one of the more recent interviews, um, before the iPad came out, somebody asked him if the new iPad would have a stylus. And I, his face just turned red, and he's like, of course not. You know, that's kind of blasphemy. He's like, why would it have a stylus? Because he had been burned so bad with handwriting recognition. Um, but if you look at what Apple has done ever since then, is they've only put, they've still been on the cutting edge of technology, but they've only put things that, they have the new mantra of just works. So they, they spend a rigorous amount of time to make sure that that's not going to happen again. But again, to, you know, kind of bringing this back to, to, to what, we, what I was talking about is that there's the, I, I, what we're trying to do with a lean startup is take a very big vision, like something that Steve Jobs had 20 years ago, and break it up into smaller chunks that can be tested out and if you almost look at it, a lot of these products that have come out, the iPhone, uh, the iPods, and a lot of the, the even, the, the, even the, the laptops that are coming out, they're all kind of building on the same innovations in design, technology, and learning. And they're all ways, in some ways, they're byproducts of that big vision. And they've all become successful products on their own right, which, is just, which has just been great for Apple. But for many of us, even if we build these byproducts as learning exercises, they're still kind of ways for realizing a bigger vision that we're going after. So that's what the kind of the, the, the basic message of Lean Startup is, 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 is if you have a very small vision, if you have a very simple idea or a simple product, a lot of these ideas don't quite, concepts don't quite, it, it, might, actually be, be, it might actually be overkill. It might actually be too much sidetracking. If you've got something very small, you can build something over the weekend and get that MVP in a weekend, you know, just go and do it and then start the process of measuring and seeing what happens, which is how a lot of side projects like Twitter even got started. Even the Twitter folks, uh, talk about how you know they, they did that as a as a weekend project, and they were kind of surprised by the numbers, but they still didn't think that was a real business. They were building their real business with the audio company, and that was going to be their big money making uh, idea. And only when the the numbers just became too good to ignore that they started paying attention to Twitter. And for the longest time, it was ice cream for them. They called it as it was it was ice cream. It was something they would do when they got bored of like building this serious company and went and played around with Twitter. And then Twitter turned out to be this big thing. So that's an example of where many times there are these accidents that we don't quite expect. So if you've got projects like those, by all means, you know, build them, but still measure, measure them. And when, when there is some of these metrics that are kind of moving in that favor, you do have to take things seriously and, and kind of double down and, and figure if there's something viable. And, and in Twitter's defense, even though there's huge value there, it's, it's, there's still no question on whether, I and mean, there's, there's no clear path on how they're going to monetize it. But everyone realizes that with those many people, there is kind of an inherent asset that's been built. So again, different type of business, different business model.
But again, I would say coming back to this, this is the, the essential um, build, measure, learn loop that kind of defines a lean startup. So I'll walk you through this and, and talk about what an experiment really is. So at the very top, you basically start with ideas. And these would be hypotheses or things that you want to build, things that you want to go test. Then we go out and we build something. And this doesn't have to be the, the full product. It could be a proxy of a product. So it could be a screenshot. It could be a mock-up. It could be a video, um, many of those things. We actually put that in front of customers, and we measure their reaction, both qualitatively and or quantitatively, depending on what stage we're in. We take that data that we collect, and we, and we, we, we extract some real customer learning up from it. And I'll talk about kind of how do you really set yourself up to learn, learn at the end, because that's very important. And from that learning, you feed into the next set of ideas or next set of features or hypotheses that you want to go test. And so that is, uh, that is the build, measure, learn loop. And the cycle around this loop is what we would call an experiment in a lean startup. So we all know that going around, the ex going around this loop fast is very important because we're trying to get to something that works before running out of resources. So speed is, is, is highly critical. At the same time, learning, specifically learning about customers, is highly critical. At the end of every one of these loops, we don't want to say we are defect free or we, you know, we, we, we coded everything and we don't have, uh, you know, we've got so many lines of code and that's not how we measure progress. What we want to do is we want to, at the end of every one of these loops, say this is what we learned about customers. At the beginning of the loop, we thought this was going to happen. At the end of, at the, end of the loop, this actually happened. And, and as a result of that, it either confirmed or it either validated or, or invalidated our initial assumption. And we're going to use that learning to take the next step. And that's what we really want to do at the end of every one of these loops. And then something that doesn't get nearly enough attention is, is the concept of focus. And that's that right action, right time, which is why I brought kind of bootstrapping and brought that in here. Because I think that even with the lean startup, people kind of get lost in tactics. And people kind of get lost in tactics for latter stage companies. So I know Eric has, has in the past said, you know, you have to split test everything. And while that is a true statement, so even when we interview, there are ways to split test qualitatively. But a lot of people read that and say, well, I need to go and A-B test everything. And when you don't quite have a lot of traffic, doing that is really a waste of time. And so it's very important to bring, bring the idea of focus and realizing what it is that you're really trying to, um, to, to do. And that, and that determines what, kind of, what kinds of experiments you run. Another way to kind of look at this is I see all three things, speed learning and focus, being, 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 being um, kind of critical and, and, and and necessary for building an optimal learning loop. And so let's kind of walk through this and see what happens when you don't have all three. So if you're, if you're running an experiment and you're going very fast and you're super focused, but you aren't, aren't really learning about customers, that's where the image of a dog chasing its tail comes to mind. Is you might just be going very fast, but chasing the wrong thing or chasing your own tail and just going around in circles, doing a lot of busy work. If you are not going fast enough, but you are learning the right things, you are super focused on what matters to your startup at that point, you, you actually fall into that trap of running out of resources. You might not be able to iterate fast enough, and a, a competitor might just outpace you, basically take the learning you have um, and just out-execute you um, with, 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 uh, with their own speed. And if you have a situation where you aren't focused uh, on the right thing, but you're still learning about kind of things that are, 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 are helpful, and you are going fast, you can get into the trap of premature optimization. And this is also a very common place many startups fall in. And so if you're a technical founder, um, and I've been in, in the same boat many times, where uh, as technical founders, we actually lose sleep over our servers going down before we have launched. Now, before we have launched, we have zero customers on the site. Chances are when we launch, we probably will have one or two customers on the site, or most likely zero. But we still like lose sleep over how can we make the scale? How can we start optimizing for it? And scaling is almost always a good problem to have. And there are almost always easy answers in the short term to solve it, uh, which gives you permission to then go back and, and really spend time solving it right. Um, so that's, a, that's an example of premature optimization. Another one for the marketing folks, I know we have a diverse audience, is where we, we start to spend too much time optimizing for, say, AdWord conversion. And so we have this product we are building, but we spend a disproportionate amount of time trying to drive traffic to our landing page. Um, and and there's a point where you stop. There's a point where you've got enough traffic and, you've, and you show there's interest. You can show that 10 people are converting for every 20, and that's a great conversion rate for what you have. But to try to drive that number up to 1,000 visitors, that's at this stage kind of a waste of time. Because um, if, even if you drive those numbers and you don't quite have a product you can build, and even if you do have one, chances are it's not quite good enough yet. So your, your, your conversion rates down, downstream are going to be very poor. 
and you're going to just lose all that opportunity and all that effort is just a form of waste. So kind of using that lean concept, waste is anything we, we expend human energy on or human effort on that doesn't produce nearly enough value and specifically customer value. So we, we want to kind of avoid those kinds of things. So you need all three things, speed learning and focus, to build that optimal learning loop. 